Welcome back to the final episode of comparing two digital analytics tools, GA4 and Amplitude. In the episodes before, we showed how to set up basic metrics and we looked into how to analyze campaign performance between the tools. If you have not watched them, check them out as well. In this episode, we will look into segment and audiences and why this is the essential tool to make your insights immediately actionable. Let's talk about segment and audiences. How are segments and audiences helpful? One definitely use case of it is make your data actionable. And we will have a look into this uh, in a second so you understand a little bit more. But segments are also helpful to get better insights because like, it helps you to create a bucket for a specific kind of type of users. So take an example. So we can have users who come from uh, organic search results and then we can have users who come from paid brand campaigns. Both of them can behave totally differently on the platform. And we already, when you watch the second video, you already could see like we were analyzing the campaign performance report and breaking down everything by the campaign, this is already segmentation, but segments in general go even further. We could analyze people who have viewed at least five meals in the Amplitude case and haven't submitted an order yet. This could be interesting because these seems to be people who are definitely interested to order something, but for some reasons they don't send an order. So we can try to figure out what is their problem. We could take the segment, turn it into an audience, and then use this audience to reach out to this kind of users. So, for example, when we have, let's say, 2,000 people in our segment that are checking a lot of meals but don't order something, we, for example, can create a specific kind of email campaign to reach out to them to ask them, look, what's missing? Do you have issues that you don't find the right meals? Do you, you don't trust the restaurants? Do you have issues with our ordering process? This gives you an ability to immediately take action on the kind of insights that you have created. And Again, core audience for this is like the marketing team, but not only. So this is also like something that is really interesting for the product team, for customer success team, for the growth team. So it depends a little bit which team uh, is included in managing the customer experience. Let's see how we can create segmented audiences. And we start again in Google Analytics 4. Again, we are in, in Google Analytics 4. Again, we are in the GA4 provided demo account. And so what we can do now, so first we start out with segments. As you can see here, we already have a segment active here. So this is here at the top, which is basically all users. It's like the biggest segment that we have. If you want to add a new segment, we can just go in here. So right now we are looking at the user. So it only makes sense to create a segment that also represents the user. So what we could look is, okay, which initial users came from our new SEO initiative? But what we can do, for example, we can use the first user campaign. Then we say, okay, it should match organic. And then just click apply. And now we can see all the different kind of users which are coming initially from SEO traffic. And now we can compare this kind of segment across all the different kind of reports here. So as you can see here, so we can look, okay, naturally, they all came from organic search then, but here, for example, we could check, okay, are there differences in countries? And this is also like even more interesting for us is to see, okay, how is the user activity over time for these different kinds of segments? As we can just see here, the SEO traffic is definitely not so good as the whole traffic in general. Good points to look into what we can improve. This makes segmentation extremely powerful, and you can apply this on every kind of report. This is how we can work with segments in GA4. This is definitely part one how we can do this. These are ad hoc segments, so it's like for a quick analysis and so on. If we really want to work constantly with specific kind of segments and we already want to reuse it, we can create them and persist them. So where we can do this, again, a little bit hard to find. So we can go into Explore. Let's say we start with a blank exploration. Here you can see segments. Again, we can use the segments here also like to break down specific kind of metrics that we can create here. When we click the plus, we can build a new segment. And then what we can do is, so we can decide, okay, do we want to create a user segment? So based on user properties, or do we want to create a session segment? Or if we just want to segment down based on an event? We also get some built-in ones. So for example, like recently active users, we get non-purchases and so on. But we want to create a segment session. So then we can do the same thing. So in the end, like we can say, okay, we are interested in, let's say the organic ones. Let's use the same one, which is session campaign, then contains organic, apply, and here you can already see, so it calculates the number of users which are in this segment on the fly to really see, okay, this is really good for testing things. 
And so we could say like SEO traffic to indicate this. We have built our first powerful, our first uh, segment, which is really interesting for us. And so we can say save and apply. Then of course, like we could use it now in this report, but we can also like build more complex segments. So just to give you an example, we go into user segment because something we want to build, like we need to do in the user segment report. Because what I'm interested in is sequence-based segments. A user does step one and then does step two. And by that, when he or she does these both, they basically form this kind of segment. This is really powerful for us to, for example, investigate power users where we can say, okay, a power user has to do at least A and then they have to do B and then maybe they even have to do C. And when they did all of these three events in a specific kind of time frame, we call them power users. And so this is something that you can build here. And let's say we remove this because we want to build a, se a sequence. We can start here. So this is basically now all the users that viewed uh, a product in, a, in an e-commerce store then added it to cart. We could even, even do as we could do exclude all users who have purchased something. So let's do that. Because the interesting thing is what it does is this leaves us with the users who still have not finished their order. In the end, this is a classic segment that is often used in e-commerce for card abandonment emails. Talking about this, so how can we work with this kind of segment? Well, let's call it card abandonment. And how can we work with this? In GA, we can build an audience. We can say, okay, how long do we want to keep users within this kind of, let's say, membership? So 30 days might be okay as a starting point, but we could also get it down to seven days so that in the end, like we don't uh, really send so many constant messages to them. We can define it like this. We can save and apply. And once we save and apply, this basically gets synced out into our Google Ads account that we hopefully already have connected with our Google Analytics 4 account. So this is the prerequisite that in the end, like you have to combine your Google Ads account and your Google Analytics account. But once you have done that, you can just build this audience, save and apply. And then this audience becomes available to you in your Google Ads account. And again, this is extremely powerful to work with something like that because now we can send them specific kind of messages. You might already know this kind of messages that you get. Hey, you still have items in your cart. I'm still not sure if cart abandonment is the best kind of strategy, but I think you get the idea that you can build really, let's say, very advanced segments here and then use them for your marketing activities. In GA4, so the only possibility is like to sync this audience up to Google Ads. You cannot use it for an email or you cannot sync it to any kind of other marketing platforms. So in the end, like, naturally, it only goes to Google Ads. This is what you can do with segment and audiences in Google Analytics. And now let's have a look what you can do in Amplitude. So again, let's hop over to Amplitude. In Amplitude, we have the same way. We can build a segment from scratch. We go to audiences, and here the segments are called cohorts. So we go into a cohort, then we can create a cohort. And here again, like you already have some templates that you can use, but we just go, we define something on our own. We looking into users. So let's say we want to look into people coming from a specific kind of campaign. We pick UTM campaign. And then, for example, we are super interested in this one because this is something that the marketing team is really interested in. And then based on that, look, we can already see here. So we have 230 users within this kind of cohort. What is really nice in Amplitude, what we can do here is we can even have a look at this users to already see, okay, does our selection really make sense? This is something which I really prefer because this is definitely like the deep down view. So here we can see for this kind of user ID what they have done so far. So we can see, okay, which kind of events they have done. And then of course, like we can also see where they came from. We can also see all the different kind of user properties they have. And for example, here we can see they are coming from this kind of campaign, from this kind of medium, and of course, like this kind of source. So our segmentation is right. And so, for example, we could now go in and save it. But I want to show you something else, which is also really nice that you can do in Amplitude because like, it's a little bit more practical when you already have started with an analysis. So what we can do is we can create, let's say, a simple funnel already. Like if you watch the other videos, you can already see. So we use similar funnels already. So we say, okay, someone starts with restaurant viewed. Then we say, okay, they submit an order. We have 72% of people who haven't ordered something, but they definitely have checked out a, a restaurant. So we can try, for example, to send them specific kind of discounts to motivate them to maybe order something. What we can do is we can create directly a cohort from here. So we can adapt the name and so on if we want to, but I guess this is totally fine. 
Now, Amplitude is already giving me a hint what I can do in the next step. And this brings us to the point that we already covered in GA. So, okay, we want to do something with this chord. And I already said we can send out a discount to them. So what I can do is I can set up different kind of destinations for Amplitude where I want to send the data. And as you can see here, so right now we don't have any kind of destination configured yet, but let's have a quick look into the catalog. As you can see here, I could also send it up to Google Ads, which I can do in GA4. But as you can see here, I have plenty of more options here. For example, if we use Brace, I can just sync it up to Brace and then the marketing team can work directly in Brace to set everything up that they do already there. If, for example, we could add this to, to Facebook as well and to run campaigns on the different kind of meta platforms. And as you can see here, so I have different kind of possibilities where I can send this kind of data just depending on where our marketing team is actually working. So let's assume, okay, we work in Brace, so we can now set it up to Brace. Then we can sync up this kind of audience that we just saw in our funnel, and then the marketing team can try a discount campaign for the people who already checked out a restaurant but haven't ordered yet. And so by that, they can drive them to create more orders. And so this is a really powerful way to make an analysis and take the results immediately out of the analysis to then create something actionable. An interesting case, what we could also do is we have this 90.2% where an order has been submitted, but the order has been, hasn't been confirmed. So this is definitely interesting for us. This should be something where we have to follow up with the restaurants. What was the problem there? So what we can do is because like we easily have access to this kind of data. So we can do the same thing. So we can create a cohort based on that. And then in the end, we can basically sync this data up too. Again, we can go in here. We can check our different destinations. And now we have different kind of ways. We, for example, could load this into Snowflake instance. And then, for example, like our data engineering team can create a specific kind of report for the team that is following up with the restaurants to really see, okay, what was the problem here? Or for, or for example, we could set up a webhook that always like when someone lands in this kind of cohort, let's say, okay, we have a time window of, I don't know, one hour. This is usually like how it works for confirmation of an order. And so like after this hour, this gets automatically pushed into a backend process where then the application can check up with the restaurant, okay, what was the problem here? So we, we have plenty of ways how we can work with this. But the nice thing is here is, yes, we can build this all by hand and so on. We can try to figure it out. But here's something like, let's say the marketing or the product team can go in there and can already say, look, this is interesting for us. We want to solve this. And they can already prepare on their side to take the first step. And then let's say someone else in the company can pick it up and can start to work with it. This makes it extremely powerful to work with. Again, in Amplitude, you have different ways to define your segmentation. So either you can go into audiences, you can create different kind of cohorts here, or which I often use as starting points, like you have a specific kind of report where you can see already a specific kind of pattern. And you can always click in the different kind of reports and can just say, okay, create a cohort out of it. And so this is an extremely powerful way. And then again, like you have multiple destinations where you can sync up this kind of audience, whatever fits to your use case. This was the episode about segments and audiences. And I hope you enjoyed it as I did. Because for me, this connection between creating an analysis and then providing the data for the marketing team so they immediately can start working with it is extremely powerful. I hope you watched all the three videos of this series already. If not, make sure that you check out the other two. And I hope it gave you a good idea how you can work with both tools, with Google Analytics 4 and with Amplitude, and that you are confident if you have to switch from one to the other, that you can pick up your work pretty quickly. See you in the future in any next videos.